All right, hello everyone. Welcome to Microsoft Build. Uh, my name's Casey, this is Arun. I'm a PM for Power Apps. Arun works, uh, he's a PM on the graph side. And we came together, we're really excited today to teach you guys a little about uh, some of the things we're doing with both Power Apps and Microsoft Graph. Uh, we're just catching up backstage and Arun was telling me some of the really exciting things they're doing in that space. Uh, Arun, you wanna tell the, our audience a little about that? Uh, sure. So uh, many of you have heard about Microsoft Graph today. So Microsoft Graph is the main um, API platform that is publishing all of the data that you can access across the various assets. And what we have done here is uh, we're going to be talking to some very exciting examples on how you can use the Power Apps framework to build low-code applications very quickly that take advantage of Microsoft Graph in the back end. So before we get started, you know, we'll quickly go through a couple of slides on Graph in case anybody isn't you know, very much familiar with it. First off, as you can see, all of the data that you have stored in Microsoft across the different products are all linked to each other. So that's what we mean by Graph is not just the brand name of the API, but it is how all of the elements are linked to each other and all of those links are accessible and available to you uh, using the REST based JSON API. Uh, the second one that we wanted to point to on the graph side is, uh, is that it provides the access layer. So it doesn't matter which product uh, data that you're trying to access, graph access like a unified entry point for you. And it provides a single auth, which makes it super easy. And today we are going to be talking about how you can leverage all of the data through graph using Power Apps. But before that, Casey, can you guys explain to us what is Power Apps? And yeah, so Power Apps is kind of our low-code, no-code pl uh, platform. So it's on the business applications platform. And so it allows people to come in and quickly build a business application and go to market very quickly with an enterprise app that connects to various different data sources. And you can build these and deploy them within a matter of a couple of days as opposed to writing a completely custom application. Um, so we're gonna dive in a little bit, give you guys some examples of what we're talking about. Uh, so when we start with the business application platform, we think about Power Apps and Power BI. And then as we extend this out a little bit, if you look at the left side, we have our transactional data. So this is your Dynamics 365, your common data service for apps. And then on the right side, we have the analytics side. So this is what we could also refer to as the common data service for analytics. Then we also have a rich set of over 200 connectors that connect not only to your Microsoft data, but also across various different other products and data sources. And then tying it all together, is this, this is natively built on Azure, and so it's easily extensible with the Azure platform. Okay, so some of the core capabilities, um, as I mentioned, we can, you know, kind of a WYSIWYG editor to quickly build your applications. You can automate that through the use of Microsoft Flow. And then we have these rich data connectors uh, for crowd operations against, uh, you know, multiple different endpoints. And then, as we get into the extension scenario, this allows you to um, professional developers to come in and use RESTful APIs to build uh, connect, uh, custom connectors, and as well as ASP.NET uh, core Azure functions. So once you build a custom connector then, this can also be accessible to other Power Apps users. So your citizen developers, you can expose your functions to them within Power Apps. They can build their rich applications without having, uh, knowing how to write code. Uh, so for the rest of the session, you know, we want to make it very interactive and hands-on. So in order to you know, make it easy for you to use Graph inside Power Apps, what we've done is we're launching 10 new sample template apps. So these 10 new templates are available right now in Power Apps, and each of these are basically a demonstration that will teach you how you can use one of those various connectors. So let's get started, jump into the Power Apps demo, where we'll be able to see all of these templates. And the idea behind these templates is we've taken some of the common application scenarios and built out examples, but if you break into each of these examples, you will learn you know, one new connector. So the example we're starting with today is an app that we built called Meeting Capture. 
So the Meeting Capture app is designed to be a companion app for anyone who's in meetings where you can you know, take notes, assign tasks, and things like that. But first off, you know, the first screen of the Meeting Capture app, you can see that this is going to list you all of your available meetings. So this is coming from your calendar API in Graph, where you say, list me my available meetings. So now we've picked the first meeting. And immediately, you can see that in the UI, at the top right here, you have the list of attendees. So this is, again, coming to you from the Graph API with the information about the person, his job title, photos, as well as the meeting information. Um, here, you have some area for you to put in some notes and also create some tasks. So maybe let's uh, fill in some sample tasks here. And what is happening as you're building out all of this data is all of this is being built out in Power Apps. And when we go to the finish step, you'll see how all of these can be exported to the other products. So here we created some sample nodes, and we've created some sample tasks. And using the OneNode API in Power App, what you can do is you can go and save all of the meeting notes you've created to OneNote, and similarly for Planner. So the main takeaway here is if you go into Power Apps today and crack open one of these examples, you don't have to figure out how to build a OneNote integration or how to build a Planner integration or an Outlook integration from start. All of these examples exist for you today, and you can just go in and start leveraging it. Uh, so if we were to go to schedule follow-up meetings, so the other part we wanted to show you is calendars. So calendar is a very core cool part, and this one shows you how you can do calendar integration as well. Here, uh, one important aspect of calendar is scheduling, which is how do you find available meeting times for a variety of people. Here again, you know the advantage of using Microsoft Graph is it provides an API that intelligently figures out what's the best time. So here, KZ has picked the same set of attendees, and the API is giving you back what are the best times. So if you're trying to build a new calendar integration, you can take this example as a starting point and then start building from that. So now at this point, what you've done is we've created some meeting notes, scheduled a follow-up meeting, and let's go to Outlook to see what has happened. So all of this, as you can see, is a live integration. You can see the time is 4.30 PM, as done right now. And this is the email that is being sent out. And one of the things you're going to notice about this email is it's a very nice, highly formatted HTML email. And Power Apps also allows you to do this sort of you know, pixel perfect, nice content that's being sent out. And this email was sent using the email APIs. And similarly, if you look at the first one, that's a calendar invite that has gone out. Uh, that, again, is being sent to Power Apps. So the main uh, takeaway we wanted to point out from all of this is that Power Apps is a very powerful way for you to integrate and build applications. And we have examples using Graph for you to get started. Uh, Casey, I saw you in Planner. So let's maybe go back to Planner. And you can see the Planner group called Microsoft Build 2018 that's been newly created. And if you go there, you're going to see that the task was created. So now let's uh, maybe have Casey explain to us how all of this works internally. So you can you know, crack this open and build your own custom extensions of this. All right, thanks, Arun. Uh, yeah, so Arun gave you a pretty good functional overview as well as some of the touch points that we're using on the Microsoft Graph side. So right now I have the app open in edit mode, and I wanted to give you a little bit of an extension scenario. So Graph has an API called relevant people. Now, you can see here in the app that we have the ability to add additional attendees once we send the meeting notes after our meeting is finished. My extension scenario here is that instead of just being able to search for attendees, we also want to have relevant people that you normally interact with on a day-to-day -day basis be recommended within the app and have that shown by default. And so you can uh, quickly just add those people in because they're people you, you normally interact with. And so the first thing we're going to do is we have this control here. And we want to control the visibility of this. And so let me just go down and get this. I'm going to copy and paste these functions, but I'll talk through them as we go. So the user search results gallery here, we have this visibility control. 
we want to put some conditional logic around this. And so what I'm saying here is that if this search box uh, is blank, or if it, if it contains data, then, um, sorry, if, if the search box is blank, then uh, we're going to set the visibility of this. And then as I go in here, let me copy this again. OK, so once we set the visibility of that, we're going to go ahead and insert another gallery on top of this. Let me do this. We're going to go insert. We're going to insert a blank vertical gallery. And the data source, I'm going to actually just enter this formula in. So we're going to resize this gallery here, move it in place. You can see here I get these nice grid lines to snap it into place and make it kind of pixel perfect and have a nice design element around it. And then for the items that we want to display in this gallery, let me go ahead and paste this, this function in here. So like I said, we're using that uh, this connector that hits the graph endpoint. It's the Office 365 users connector. I already have the data source added within my app. Uh, and we're calling relevant people. And we're going to get that email address for relevant people. OK, copy this. Now, similarly, how we set visibility on the other gallery item that we had, I want to set the visibility on this. And so we're basically going to say, if the other gallery is not displayed, then we're going to display this one instead. So we're going to display the relevant people if the user search box is not populated with data. OK, next we're going to go ahead and we're going to insert a label for this. And we're going to do this item dot display name. We'll just remove that. Go back to that. I'm going to try that again here. Insert the label. And so this can be a little bit finicky. You have to add it right within the control there. Apologies. Once this is selected, come on. There we go. And so up here, we're going to have a collection created um, that's listing all the attendees for the meeting. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to add an icon in. We're going to add a plus icon to this new gallery that I just inserted. Okay, I'm going to move that right over here so we have the ability to add this, add the person. And then we want to set the on select property here. Okay, so for this collection that we already had created, we have this email recipient. So we're going to pass in the UPN as well as the display name for the user. Okay, and so I haven't applied a whole lot of formatting to this search box here. We could definitely make that look better, but just given the interest of time, just going to go ahead and play it. We we'll show you what this looks like. So it's returning all the relevant people. And I can go ahead and add these in. Once again, once we export this, it'll send it to those people. All right.
Okay, so that was just a little quick introduction on our uh, quick session here. There's some more in-depth sessions that we have going on. Uh, one that really goes into depth about building custom connectors, uh, and that's tomorrow at 1.15. And then we also have one for uh, around the Microsoft Graph connecting to essential data uh, that your app needs. And that's also tomorrow. So thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, we have some references here. So there's a blog post on meeting capture that goes into more detail uh, about how the app was built. There's also some video documentation, as well as in-depth, detailed documentation on docs.microsoft.com that we'll be releasing shortly. Um, check out Power Apps at web.powerapps.com, and then all the connectors that we talked about, plus uh, we have documentation on over 200 different connectors, as well as the actions within each uh, connector and what you can do with those. So be sure to check that out, as well as the graph reference. Thank you.